Hey everyone, uh, it's Joe Lines here, and today I have my special guest, uh, Hellbent. His channel, Civ Reborn. So he's, I'd say, the other, the biggest. They're like between the two of us, we're the most popular, or maybe what's what's the right word I'm thinking for, Hellbent, of the the um, uh, number of videos out there in Auto Hotkey. I think you and I are the only ones doing it consistently. Uh, yeah, at least what, nowadays there used to be a couple others, but yes. And, um, and the great thing is, and not as I said, we don't even care, right? We're quote unquote competitors and that, but um, we both work in very different areas. So we don't have a lot of overlap uh, and, it, and it comes to be fun because we can actually teach each other stuff and how we do things. So um, we just a while ago finished one where I led the discussion on doing hot streams on hot keys with his, and now um, he's going to lead this teaching us some cool stuff he's done with GUIs and creating image stuff. So. Hellbent, why don't you go ahead and take it away, man? Okay. Uh, thank you, Joe, for that. Um, so Share your if, screen <laughs> when you're ready. Oh, yeah. So uh, I'm sure that uh, at least a few of the people that watch your videos also watch mine. But um, over the last year, about a year ago, I created a uh, an editor, basically, just drawing software, so that way I could – um, draw things using the GDIP library for AutoHotKey and have it be a little bit less tedious. Um, and we're gonna, I'm gonna show your users if they're interested on how to use it and then how to take those kind of graphics and show some of the things that they can do with them on their GUIs. Because I think a lot of people don't know that there's, there's even though AutoHotKey isn't very it's not optimized for a lot of these kind of graphics things. There is still a lot of things that you can do and they, they come out well enough with auto hotkey. So the first thing I guess I'll show is I'll give a little backstory on why I created this thing. So before I used to do, when I used to do custom GUIs, I would do usually use PNGs, but there's problem with PNGs. You have to, if you want to share it with somebody, they have to obviously download the, them as well. If I compile a script with it in it, I have to go through and write in every, I have to write in a line of code, file install this PNG to this path to this path, right? And before you know it, you have hundreds of lines where I'm adding in these images. Um, those images themselves, they couldn't really be altered after the fact. So if I want to, for example, create a, a bunch of buttons, I would have to create a different, I would have to go into a, a drawing software and actually draw each and every single button. Because in other words, if it's a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, it's got different text on it, whatever, I'd have to, it would stretch everything out and it wouldn't look good. So I had a couple of years ago, I had played around with using GDIP. So this is the first thing that I had ever created using GDIP where I created all my own controls and everything, sliders and everything like that. And I wanted to do a little bit more with this. So I went into the script that I had this. And for one, I couldn't, I couldn't read my own code anymore. But if I wanted to change, if I wanted to change, it wasn't written in a way for me to be able to reuse that code. So I, was, I would have to start from scratch. And the way you have to do it with the, with this GDIP library is you just have to call up a bunch of functions. So if I want to draw a line, it's that's a line of code. For, well, first I have to create a brush, then I have to draw that onto my onto my uh, bitmap, and then I have to display it. I have to run it, look at what it looks like, and then go make little tweaks to it. And then run it again, make little tweaks to it again, run it again. So. I was like, I can't, I can't deal with that. So I want to come up with a environment where I could actually draw like as if I was drawing in paint. And that brings me to this editor. Now this editor, I will point out is an alpha. So it's, it's not optimized for, for everyone's computer. It's not optimized to make it run super, super fast, everything like that. But it is a hundred times better than I was doing it before. So I have the editor and what I do with this is I can create a bitmap or I can create the code that I want to use in a script in this editor. So I draw like as if I'm using MS paint, but then what it spits out is function calls. So if I come in here, I can set 
the width and the height of the bitmap that I want to create and the smoothing. The smoothing is just the anti-aliasing. Usually I, I'll go with like two and then I can create my bitmap. So this is my canvas that I'm going to draw something to. What I draw to it are basically just shapes. So I have a list of shapes that I can do. I can do a fill a rectangle, fill a rounded rectangle, fill a circle, which is an ellipse, uh, fill a polygon, which is different points. So I can set different points for it to go through, a pie, a draw a rectangle, which is just the outline, draw a rounded rectangle, draw a circle, draw lines, draw lines, bezier, arc, pie, and text. So with this, I can create basically pretty much anything that I want. So I'm gonna select that element and then add it. Once it's added, it gives me these options that I can use. So I can use, for example, I can change its position within the GUI or within the bitmap. So right now it's set to default at 10 pixels. Uh, the X position is 10 pixels over and 10 pixels down. I can change that to whatever I want within that area. Okay, or so I can use these buttons here. So if I use the button on its own, I can go up by one pixel at a time. Or if I hold shift and press it, it goes up by 10. So just let me interrupt you up here because at the very beginning, you said, so here is my canvas, I think is what you said. Yes. Um, and you were actually, it looks like now you're referring to the black square. Yes. So okay, the black square, it doesn't actually exist. It doesn't actually yeah. exist. No, when you said cam, I was thinking it was the green overall green area. That's um, just my background, so that way I can do it, and okay, I can actually change that to whatever I want. So whatever, yeah. I it's just I. That's why I was, yeah. So I almost asked, but then I'm like, no, no, yeah, that's what he's talking about. And then when he drew this, I'm like, okay, I'm. So if I do, let's say three three six six nine nine. So there's I changed the color of my background. That's just my background. Um, one of the cool things about this actually is that I don't. I can have this bitmap here that I'm working on, but I can also go and load as w however many I want. So mm -hmm. if I do that, so now I can, I have this one here as well. So I can mm -hmm. use them as references. Cool. So one of the things that I use this for a lot is to create control. So usually let's say if I'm creating a switch, a switch has an on state and an off state. So what I'll usually do is I'll go in and let me see if I can find a switch. Uh, radio button. Okay. So I don't know if you can see these that well, but yeah, I have yeah, a, right. I have a yeah. switch that has a off state and an on state. Right. So I'll go in, create the, the off state or the on state, and then load that up a duplicate of it and just modify it. So that way it's in the on state. So I can have as many, any of these as I want on screen. Mm -hmm. And then I can go in and remove those. While I'm doing this, if I decide, well, maybe I don't need that much space, I can go in and actually alter it. So that way it suits my, the need that I have right now. So maybe I only want it to be a width of a hundred. Maybe I want to see, maybe I'm working on a really small control that I can't see very well, so I can come in and actually zoom in on that bitmap. So this right here is that, and everything is um, done so that way any changes that I do here, it, so right here I have it set to five times. So if I move this element up one, it's going to move it up five in here. So. it's all calibrated but anyways that's that's uh, and while we're here zoomed in is that where that smoothing if you changed it we would see a difference in yes the blurring? yes so okay. now there's probably a better way of doing the zoom so i think no matter what i think no matter what the smoothing is it's still going to look a little bit blurry along the edges mm -hmm. and that's just because i don't know i don't know how the the there's probably an appropriate way to do the zoom here is I'm just stretching everything. That's how I have my zooming here. But there is probably a better way of doing the zoom. But you can see, I don't know if you could see the difference right there when I switch to between zero and let's say two. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Right. But either way, either way, it's definitely not going to be as sharp as it as it is in real life, or the reality of it. And where did I put that? I can also retract. If I need more space, I can right click on these to retract them. Cool. But this is just a prototype. What I want to do eventually is have all of these kind of things as detachable windows. Mm -hmm. You can dock them, kind of. Yeah. Right. But uh, this is just a prototype. My my goal wasn't to create a high end program. It was I wanted I wanted an environment that I could make things in really quickly. Mm -hmm. I spent two weeks on this, got it to the point pretty much to the point where it is now, and then I was like, okay, now I can use it. <laughs> yeah. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll make some tweaks to it later on. <clears throat> so um, I can also do, thanks to a, another person who submitted some hotkeys, I can actually use my arrow keys, mm -hmm. arrow keys with shift to move 10 pixels at a time. I can stretch it out with arrows, control shift and the arrow keys. So this is, now I've just created a background. So if I want to create a background, this is my background, and now I'll start adding controls to it. Right, I can go in, fill in a circle. If I want, I can change the color to whatever I want. Um, I can use hatch brushes. So there's, I think, 54 different hatch brushes. So I don't know if you can tell this is like a brick. Mm -hmm. And there's like straight lines. So that's just like pre-designated patterns, basically? Yeah, they're they're included within the GDIP library. So okay. the, this is a, a it's called a hatch brush. And in fact, I actually have for when I I don't use it very often, but for those times that I do want to use it, I have where is it? I haven't used it in a while. Hatch samples. There we go. So I have this here that shows me all the different hatches and then I can tell which one it is. So if I want to use this, it's number 41. Cool. If I want to use this, it's number 52 and I can change the color to see if I like what it looks like. So that's red. So that's what it would look like with that and likewise. So this is just a sample, I can, so that way I can easily pick out the hatch brush that I want. The other thing I can do is I can create line brushes and and gradient brush. The line brush and the gradient brush, they're basically the same thing, except the line brush I can do on angles. So I can pick two colors. Let's say I'll do this color here. Let me Let me pull out something that I can use to... This. So if I want that there, and maybe that there. So now I can create a line brush that I can see it's just basically a gradient brush that I can change its direction, mm. starting position, and I can do this with hotkeys. So when I hit set, it tells me that I use shift to set the position, the first position, and then I can use control to set the second position. So I can switch between the two different positions by using control and shift to actually set that as the position. So. I use I like to use gradient brush a lot. Um, the gradient brush is the, is the same as the line brush, but I can't do it in angles. So it's basically filling a square rather than. Mm. So if I hit set, it'll do from the top down to the bottom. And then there's this linear gradient mode and wrap mode. I forget. I don't use them that often, but it's like right here. With the first one, it's from the top to the bottom, but I, if I change this to another value, it'll be like from this, this side to that side, mm -hmm. or from this corner to that corner. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if I go like that. Yeah, I get it. 
right? And then there's a wrap, a couple of different wrap modes. Like I said, I don't use these ones that often. They're, they're, when I programmed this all in, it, it, these are some of the options for yeah, those I functions. It. So I just right. included it in. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and then from there, it's just pretty much doing, adding stuff in. So I'll show you a couple of examples that I have that are already done, but I'll, I'll go over quickly a, a few other features that I have with this. Um, when this starts getting into, when I start getting into a bitmap that has tons and tons of elements in it, because like I said, it's not optimized. What it does is every time I change something. So every time I move this circle, change its shape, whatever, it redraws everything. It re it creates a brand new bitmap that gets displayed on my screen, but it draws mm -hmm. it every single time I change something. Mm -hmm. So it's not optimized. And a good way to, for me to optimize it would be to have it so that everything before the element that I'm working. So in this case, since I'm working on this element here, what I could do is I could have all of these as a pre assembled bitmap. So instead of, Instead of drawing, instead of every single time I change something, it drawing this, then drawing this, then drawing this. Yep. Instead, everything's already in an image, its own bitmap. So it just puts that that single image one time, and then draws this. So, so basically, let me see if I can restate this in a less geeky way. Um, <laughs> hopefully, still right. But it's you'd basically be creating one layered image that that has everything done and yet you have one layer that you're manipulating separately exactly so you're and not redrawing was, everything else yeah i get exactly it. and if if i was to say jump up to this one and start making edits right. with it then, i could have all of these right. as their own yeah and then all of these as their own right i get it yeah right. that's a smart thanks for pointing that out too it just helps people think through of ways to optimize code right and yeah so <clears throat> Eventually what I want to do is not only do it, do it that way, but also have um, sort of like if you're, if you're familiar with paint.net, you can add layers. So actually creating different layers. So that way, mm -hmm. because if I come, if I pull up something that has quite a bit of, um, let me see. I'm going to turn off auto draw because it's going to take a while. So this one here has, I don't know, a couple hundred different elements on it. And if I can draw, I can force it to draw right now. It takes a while for it to load. Because <laughs> every single time it's adding a new, new element, it's redrawing all those elements. Oh, it's, yeah. not, it's not odd, optimized. So that's yeah. why I have auto draw turned off right now. Right. Because we're recording this, um, my computer is much slower than it would be, but even still, it would take a while. Yeah. So let's say if I wanted to, if I was creating a GUI like this, what I would probably want to do is maybe, maybe have this as a section as its own layer. So that way I can say, okay, select that section. And then only mm -hmm. the things that are relevant with that section are right. in that window. Right. Yeah, I'll lock them together. And Earlier today, I did add an update to make navigation a little bit easier. So one of the things I use, um, so let's say this, this GUI here, for example, if I took this and actually wanted to make a program out of this, I would want to put right about here, I would want to put a trigger so that way if I click on that, I can drag the window around. If I click on this, it minimizes the window. If I click on this, it closes closes the program, right? So what I might want to do is where I have that shape. So let's say this, let's, I don't know if it is, but let's say that that was, I can put a note here um, to say, move window. It'll, this will become more relevant when we get to what this action, the code it spits out looks like. But when I spit out the code, now I'll have a note right where this where it's filling this rectangle and it's going to tell me where that posi X position is, uh -huh. that Y position and the width and the height. So I can easily now add a trigger at those coordinates to be able to use it. Likewise, if I want to add to the minimize, I can say, okay, that's where my minimize is. So min 
And then here, let's say this is, let's, it's not, but let's say it, this is the close. So when I spit out the button, when I spit out the code, I can say, okay, those are the coordinates I want to put my trigger for my close button. Those are the coordinates for this. Oh, I get whatever. it. Okay. Right. Help me, uh, remind me of this part. The, everything you're showing in that list view there, mm -hmm. where, where, are, are those are layers. What would you call those things? Elements. Elements. Okay. Right. That's what I call them. I call them elements. Um, <clears throat> what I can do with those elements, if I go back to, if I remove... If I remove this and go back to that other one, what I can do with these things is if, let me delete some of this stuff. Um, oh, I got to turn the auto draw on. Let's say I want to, um, let me, Sorry. Okay. Let's say I want to, I'm working on something, but I want to see what it looks like behind. What I can do is I can hide that element so I can see what's behind it. Mm -hmm. So I can, if that comes up quite often, but uh, I think, I think once you start drawing with it, you, you get what that's doing. Um, but like, oh yes, yes. Like I said, uh, today, today I added a new feature with the notes to actually uh, kind of a poor man's sections. So I, I showed you that if I, I told you that if I put these notes in it, when I spit out the code, it would be able to point where a specific element is. So that way I can grab its coordinates or make changes to it in my script. What I, what I have now though, is that if I type a note here and I can get this to force this to update, so I can just use this to force it to update. But now I can see that there's a note there. Uh -huh. there. Right. So if I continue on adding now, let's say I'm, I'm working on another part of this. So I have another section. Think of it maybe as a uh, group box. So if you're creating a GUI with a group box, maybe you have a bunch of check boxes in it and buttons in it or whatever. Right. So that's that's the way I think of this as a section. If I add a new section. Where I'm going to be adding a whole bunch of new elements two i can just add a note here and now i know that if i wanted to come back to this section here and start editing some of the things that are in it i know it's easy for me to find it sure yeah right and then create a new so i haven't quite gotten to the layered i haven't added in the layered but for the, for the time being, this is a lot easier than it was before for me to do things. Because uh, some of the bitmaps are get quite... They're, let's just say they're a pain in the butt sometimes. But in, 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 I should have brought this up right at the beginning. Because, um, you know, I, I don't deal with images and in, in this stuff uh, almost at all. Um, when, when I hear the word bitmap, I think of a you know, a, a Windows file, to, image file type, like you say. Yes. Things. But, but you did mention this, if I remember correctly, at the beginning is, hey, you know, if you're sharing stuff with a lot of people and you have images and you get tired of having files, the great thing about these is you're using the GDI library to draw these bitmaps, right? And it's it's just basically it's a mapping, I guess, of the each bit if it's on and or off and what color it is, type of thing. Is that correct? Yeah. Now with, with the bitmap, I've never actually looked up the definition of it. Uh -huh. So I know that I use bitmap the term. So when I use the term bitmap, all I mean is I create a bitmap in code, get a pointer to that bitmap. It gives me, I create graphics for that bitmap and then I get the pointer for, for that bitmap. So, so that's, that's my use of bitmap. So when you hear me say bitmap, I just mean a drawing. Yeah. But, it, but it's, the point is it's not necessarily a file. Right. It's that's right. It can be saved as a file, but yeah. And that's the beauty of it. Right. That's what I want to make sure people understand is you're, you're going to be able to draw these images and not just load files of them. That's right. So yeah. when I share, if I share this with somebody, it's shared, they can just copy and paste it, mm -hmm. just copy and paste it into a new script and away they go. 
Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Um, when we get into, so let, let's see what, what we get with this. So let's take this, this window here, for example, right? This is for a program that I wrote. I finished it, I think October or November, but let me see. My computer is running really slow. Yeah. Zoom um, let's see this right here. So this right here is this right here. And let me, let me get that on top here. Let me put this up here. So this is that. And if I enable tips, you can see the full extent of it. So this is my basic window design. And then I have, I also designed all the controls for it. So all the buttons for it, the checkbox, you've seen the checkbox. I showed the drawing for that. Yeah. Right. And everything I created tabs for it in this program and everything like that. <clears throat> so let's take this and actually look what it looks like. So this program, when I save a bitmap, when I save this, it saves two copies of it. One copy is for the editor itself, which is just an any file that contains all the mm -hmm. elements and all their properties for that element. Mm -hmm. It's X position, Y position, what kind of brush it's using, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, that's what the editor uses. What I want to use in my script though is a function call. So if I take this and put it in my clipboard, and then paste it, this, this is what I would have had to type out mm -hmm. if I want to recreate that. Now, let me pause there real quickly. That is code that works with the GDI library. Yes. Right, okay, yeah, which isn't, you're, you were borrowing that from. Yes, so this is form. all, it's yeah. all generic. Cool. I do have like, I do have a bunch of these functions that I've rewritten Okay. because uh, for example, to create a brush, I don't want to write out all the time GDIP uh, yeah. underscore brush create solid. So I just say new brush, right? So I do have some of the, but everything here is all it's, uh -huh. it's written. So that way you can just take the GDIP library cool. and this will work exactly the same way. So at the beginning of the function, it creates a bitmap, a pointer to a bitmap, creates graphics for that bitmap, sets the smoothing, and then it just goes through creating a brush, filling a shape, deleting the brush. Now to the point of those notes that I was talking about, this is where it, that comes in handy is because now when I have this here, rather than me trying to figure out where I'm trying to attach these triggers to, I have this note that says, Oh, this right here is my trigger is this is where I want to put my trigger. So all I need to do is just copy these coordinates and then just put it. Usually I use a text control because I can click on a text control to execute a, a subroutine, mm -hmm. have it go to a subroutine. Mm -hmm. So I'll set a text control at five, five, 150 width, 40 height, and then have it execute to move the window around. Likewise with. Um, yeah. And, and to clarify for those, especially from my channel, right? Cause I don't do this much. A control just think of it as like, you know, it's a, an element or a part of the GUI that is its own thing. Um, and right. I mean, that's uh, a way to, so to make it. things short, sorry. So to make things short. So that way, if I want to use that image, this image here in a script, what I actually have is I created a little tool that will allow me to, this one is just specially made just to create background windows. So if I, let me get rid of this. Actually, this is where this comes in handy. I'll just, let me, uh, and then add that there. I can come in here and clip full new script which gives me a reduced version of the auto hotkey uh, GDIP library a class that allows me to build a window really quickly and attach my graphics to it as well as 
the ability to add in some extra controls. So, so this just sets up my script. This is just getting it ready so that way I can create a new window. Mm -hmm. Now I clip new window. And now if I take my bitmap, which I have right here, and paste this somewhere in. If I run this, I should get a window. Let me see what my size is, 740, 400. And if I run this, I shouldn't have any errors. Now I have that. But I don't have a way of interacting with the window yet. So this also has these added in so that way I can I don't have to type out too much because <laughs> I'm lazy. I can go, these are what I was talking about with the the triggers for it. So if I come here, I can see that this is my first one to move the window around. I'm surprised you don't uh, you don't put the X, Y, W, and H in in the original thing. In here, yeah. You wouldn't. I don't. I would still have to remove the commas, right? Because he, I could, I could use a, I could set a variable in here. I could say. I could say that x colon equals that or well in the in the cheat sheet you know the other one where you made for yourself mm -hmm. that that's what oh, you I mean in here uh, well the thing that that exports to that yes. gives you you know it was in your other one is where we were originally looking at it where you made the notes right and it it was Oh it, yes, 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 yes. I should, I should, I should, maybe I'll start doing that. Maybe right, usually now I just, I usually just put a note in that says, uh, move window, close, minimize. Right. Just so I can find it easily. But no, yeah, I I'm should just saying do that. you're, it's always going to be that, that structure, right. Of the X, Y, W, H or however yes. you had it. So why yes. not have those letters in with the numbers? In here? Well, you're saying here, but I don't think that was, was that, is that the thing that was from the notes? Yeah, this is, so the note, the note showed that note wasn't, was attached to an element. That element had a brush, it had a shape, and it had deleting the brush. So when I go, if I go to the bitmap maker, if I go here, if I select this text control right here, and if I add a note to it, right, right, when I right. spit out the code, that note is going to look yep. is oh, going to oh. look like that, right? Uh, wait, go go back to that for me just for a second. Um, okay, now go back over. I did a little screen clip on on my end. I want to watch, so I can see. Now go ahead and go find it where you were. Okay, so so this note that would let's say that that's what it was. Yeah, with a five five one fifty forty. Yes. Right. Yes. And, and all I'm saying is when you go to use that, isn't every time you're going to put the X five, Y five, W one fifty, and H 40. Only if I'm attaching a trigger, there's other reasons which I'm going to get into in okay. a few minutes, why these notes come in handy. Okay. So you right? wouldn't so, always, so the note, the note is mainly to just point out which, which element I'm looking for. It's not always going to be a specific coordinate that I'm going to be using as a trigger for text control. It's not always going to be that way. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. But maybe what I might want to do from now on is I might actually want to, when I create the note, now yes, that you pointed it out, which is actually a good, good thing, um, when I add in, let's say, move window, what I might want to also do is say X5, Y5, width 150, height 40. So that way when it spits it out, all I have to do is just grab this. Yeah, but you have that right below there, right? Yeah, but this is this is for the function call. 
This is for the function call that draws that. Yeah, but but again, all I'm saying is you could still do it, but you wouldn't have to manually write the note, right? Because you have those values. You could dynamically append it into your note with the thing you just did. So you wouldn't have to write it. But I don't always use the notes for that reason. No, I know, but you could, all right, whatever. I might, maybe I can add a button and that, that'll do that for me. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah, I was just curious. So anyway, go keep going. Yeah, sorry, I interrupted. That's okay. That's okay. That's what the purpose of this is. It's right. for you to ask. It's yeah. it's for you to ask questions, right? Yeah. Because I've done a few videos on this using this thing. Yeah. So I mean, I know how to use it, right? right. But it's it's about other people being able to yep. use it. It's not about me being able to use it. I, I invented it. I know how to use it inside now. Yeah. Which which by the way, what I was going to mention is just the whole concept. You built a tool that makes sense to you that you yeah. can allows you to be very quick and proficient and get what you want, right? That's, that's another great point about auto hotkey, right? Is you make it exactly the way you want it. And it's just so much easier. Yeah. So uh, I do the same thing. I would do the same thing for the minimize and close, which actually aren't part of this window that I created. So I'll just comment those back out. But now if I run this, there is now a trigger in this area right here. When I click on this, it's going to trigger this this subroutine here, move uh -huh. window, which posts this message to allow me to move this window. Likewise, if I attach another trigger to minimize the window or close the window, if I click on those, they'll execute. Yeah, and just so people, if they're really new to it, um, it, it, it in reality, when he clicks that thing, it will do whatever is like in between. In, inside that function online, you know, on the stuff that's online 35. And if there was more, yeah. It, it, so you know, for example, if yeah, it's I not smart. To... It just does whatever's inside there. Or actually that's going to annoy me. So I'll just do, I don't know if I have my sounds on. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can hear that. No. Okay, so I don't have my sounds on. So I'll do a tool tip. So I can have a hundred lines of code in there. Right. Yeah, that's all I was pointing out. Is, is it 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 does whatever you tell it to do inside. And it doesn't even, you know, the move underscore window name. It's great that you name it what it's doing, but it's not a requirement, right? It's just, it's saying jump to here, do whatever's in here. Yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> so that, this is uh, what I use for a lot of scripts. Um, it's just, this one, this one here is developed the same way. It's just a, a simple GUI with a picture control that I draw the background to. And then from that, I add in my extra controls. So for example, these buttons here, these are buttons that are designed in the editor. So each button has three different, I, I give it three different phases or three different states, uh, default, hover, press. And then I code in how that works. So I can go and we'll do that in a minute, but let's go to, let's go to maybe this one, maybe this one. Now this one's probably too complicated. What I've gotten into recently is actually I'm kind of debating on what I want to show here. Um, I don't want to complicate things too much. Maybe I have a good example. I just started working on, I, I want to, I want to stress something here. So I have the, I'm going to show right now a class that I have written to create buttons. What I suggest to people, if you're just getting started, what I suggest to people is go to the forums and look up a, a um, class or a bunch of functions, a library created by a user called, by the name of just me, all one word, just me, where he has gone in and actually programmed it to use the Windows API. So what he has done is you can take an image and actually use it, change a default button and use an image as that button. Cool. Right? There's limitations on it, but if I haven't tested, I haven't tried it, but if it would accept, if it would accept bitmaps,
if it would accept these bitmaps as something you can use, mm -hmm. because the because this spits out code that I can re I can um, dynamically change. Mm -hmm. Like for example, if I was to create a PNG of this, that PNG yeah, I have to pretty much make it the same size as this, which is 106 pixels by 36 pixels. Yeah. If I make it smaller, it's going to squish it. If I make it bigger, it's going to stretch it. Right. How can I, okay. So if I, if I'm doing it by multiples of four, no problem. If I, if I expand something by multiple of four, then one pixel becomes two pixels or whatever, four pixels. Yeah. Right. But if I change it from 106 pixels to 130 pixels, then which, how does it, how does it decide which pixel is going to get one, yeah. right? How is it going to decide when I have a single pixel width? Sometimes it's going to be now two pixels. Other times it's just going to be one pixels, right? So you can't, it's not going to look good. You have to, you'd have to go in and create a PNG for every single button with this here, because of the way it's done, I can actually go in and if I can find it, let me see. I can go in and actually create buttons that are different sizes, different colors, different shapes. And I can do that through a class by passing it the dimensions that I want to pass it and then adjusting that to be whatever I want. So for example, with the, these buttons, they look identical. Like they're, the image itself is identical. There's no stretching. It's not like I'm taking a PNG and stretching mm -hmm. it or squishing it, right? I'm, every single button is drawn the exact same way, so that way it looks exactly the same. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, it's vector scalable. It's vector scalable. That's, okay. that's, what, I, that's what I'm right. looking for. Well, and one thing, help me, this is what I was going to ask you earlier, was uh, the text. The text is like a layer that just gets thrown on the top because it... Nope, it's part of it. Wow. So cool. if I come... If this one is probably a good example, um, but there's a there's a function somewhere where it says take this text and go convert this into the image that it would you know take an hour to draw because <laughs> I sure wouldn't want to actually have to color these words. <laughs> I'm very unorganized. <laughs> um, I don't know where it is. I'll, I'll look for it for a minute and then if I don't find it, oh well. All right, I found it. All right, so this, this way here, I should be able to create a uh, new button and show you how it's created really quickly. So a couple of months ago, I had created a video where I actually went through and um, created this class while I was recording it. Mm -hmm. cool. So here is an example of another type of button. So it's another design of a button. And I'm going to show you how I can take these and create any of these just by calling up a load of uh, line of code. And cool. they'll all, no matter how big or how small I make uh -huh. them, they'll all look right. They won't be stretched or skewed or anything like that. So that is through a class down here. A class down here called Clipboard Master version two buttons. And this is the arguments that I need to pass it. So I'll copy this and I'll add a new button. So I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of, um, let me see, where can I, do I have a space I can add that? Okay, so I have some space over here. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to copy one of these guys. And this is one of the reasons why I, I suggest people check out that other thing before they start working with this, because 
the way I'm still early in my development of these classes. So recently I created a new class that has a controller for it. So I've changed a little bit of the way on how it detects whether I'm hovering over something and how the class is, uh, how I can add controls to it so I can, but in here, it has to be added in a specific way. It has to be part of an array and that array has to have a specific name because there's a, a timed event. There is a timed event that loops through in this, in this older version, it loops through all of those buttons and tells me whether I'm hovering over a control hmm. and then whether I'm not hovering over the control. So it switches between its images that it uses. But like I said, I'm going to add in a new button. So I'm going to take this, this button that it ha I have with the way that I have it set up to watch for whether it's hovering over something. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use that array and I'm just going to push a new button onto it. I'm going to push a new clipboard master version two button, which is the class. And then I can tell it where I want to position it first. So I'm going to say here, I like to use, I actually like to use uh, throwaway variables. So that way I can, it's easier for me to navigate. So I'll say X equals 10 or whatever. So I have to make sure that X isn't being used for something else above this. Right. But this just makes it easier rather than just having the arguments. So normally you might have, when you call up a function, normally you'll just have the value. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Right. So which would make it a lot harder to, to navigate this. <laughs> yeah. So I just use a throwaway variable. I'm not worried that, that X is used for something else. Now I understand what you mean by throwaway. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. So I'm going to do uh, 680. So let's say 600. That's the position there. Let's go with maybe Y 100. Uh, the width, let's do 30 by 30. Uh, the window is going to be, okay, so this is all set up to be within a tab control. But anyways, yep. normally I wouldn't use, is it tab three? Okay, yes, tab three is the name of the GUI. The label that I want to attach this to, so I'm going to attach this to Bob. And then down here, I'm going to add Bob in. Mm -hmm. I think I have it set up so that way I can use functions as well as just a normal mm -hmm. label, but I'm not positive. Uh, the text that I want to have display on it. So this is only a small button. So I'll just do, let's say the number six, the font that I want to use. Um, the font, <clears throat> there might be some things that I need to add into my bitmap maker where it doesn't, even though I have that font on my computer, it doesn't necessarily use some of those fonts. So there's something I might need to add later on, but for like Arial or uh this yeah. one here, it it works fine, but there might be some things that I need to I need to add into my my class so that way it can use like I don't th I think I have Cooper Black on my computer, but I think if I used Cooper Black here, it's yeah. not gonna it's not gonna work. There's there's I have seen code before where it has to um, load a font or something like that, but this is still new territory for me. Yep. Um, font size, I can pick whatever font size I want. I'm just going to leave it whatever I had set it up here, uh -huh. which was 10 and bold. So I can do whatever size I want, whatever options I want, underline, strike through, whatever in this spot right here. Uh, the, co the font color on top. So this is red. So let's do um, aqua, an aqua color, 00FFFF. And I have this to help me pick colors. So actually let's do, let's do this pink color. The color, the, the text itself has two layers. So it looks like it has some shadowing. So if I want, I can make it black. Usually I'll typically go with black, but maybe I want in this case, I want white. Mm -hmm. The, 
background color, whatever color I make my GUI, because it's got a little bit of a border around it, like this button is actually a little bit bigger than the, the actual button is a little bit bigger than what I see. Mm -hmm. So I just have to match whatever color I make my GUI. I just make the background color. Oh, okay. So this, so that's just the background of my GUI is 33, 34, 37 and then offset. So if I don't want the text to be centered, I can offset it a little bit. Okay. All right. So now I'll see what we have. And there's my button. So that white doesn't look right. So I'm going to change that. And so that's that button. I'm going to duplicate this button. And I'm just going to move its position to, let's say, Y140. I'll leave, I'll make its width. Um, I'm going to move its X position over 100. Its width I'll make, let's say, actually I'll move it to 450. I'll make its width 200 and its height, let's say 70, a nice big button. Um, the text on it is, I'll just do, this is a button, I'll still attach to the same label and I think maybe I'll make it change its font color to, let's go with maybe this color. Run it. Tap three. And there we go. So this is my new button. So it, the way this one looks is identical to this one. There's no stretching. There's nothing like that. I mean, obviously they look different, but I th I, your point is that they're, yeah, they're, they're not being scaled. Yeah, they're being scaled and then drawn. They're not being drawn and then okay. stretched. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, and the other thing, just to clarify, just because I saw you, you kept the uh, the label, the go-to label the same. So both those buttons would do the same thing, which we don't care, right? Yeah. So um, right now they should be going to a message box, but apparently that's not working. Oh, there it is. There it is. It's just, yeah. There it is. Um, and one of the, just to clarify, because I asked this earlier, but uh, maybe it, it didn't come through. But so the, the text on each, the first one with the six and this one, this is a button. Yes. That the GDI library is figuring out how to, how to make that into an image, right? Cause that's not actually, you can't highlight that text. Is that right? No, you can't highlight that yeah. text. So I mean, it's, one of, go ahead. You no, know, it's part of, it's part of the image. Um, and that's just a function that's in that GDI plus library, right? Exactly. There's a, there's a function called uh, add string. Okay. Or something. Let's see. It's uh, GDIP text to graphics. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, because that's I'm like, holy hell, that would suck to try to have to draw those right manually. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So this is this is what I'm talking about. With uh, there's I've seen some examples before where if I want this is where I'm thinking the font comes into play. So I've seen some functions before uh -huh. where they they have like a function call that's like. Uh, set render keys or I don't I don't remember what the name of the function is I've never used it so but that's something that I'll have to look into later on about so that way I can make sure that if you have that font you can use it gotcha there's a you can also look to see if I specify a font that I don't have on my computer I can create a warning yeah and then if that warning is true then I can default it to something else like well, area right yeah. Right. Cause I, I'm pretty sure that's how auto hotkey the GUI works. So if I pick a font that doesn't, isn't valid, yeah. it'll Throw just be Arial or something. Yeah. Or yeah. maybe I'll have it say, pop up a message, download this, have it go and download the, the font right. that it uses. Do you, um, I'm just curious, do you happen to know that, that text, uh, whatever it was, does that have a uh, Unicode characters too? I don't even really know what Unicode is. Well, it's like the Enya or something, right? The the which? The, the, well, for I for for French, I'm not sure of what. 
Um, isn't there something like over the, the U maybe? The only thing I, I, I'm, I'm not even ASCII sure if it's, character. I'm not even sure if it's ASCII. I know ASCII a little bit, like, cause I did, I started off in programming in C. Uh -huh. So if I want to, if I want to uh, look, if somebody entered, let's say I had an option, pick A, B or C, and they typed in uh, uppercase C when I was expecting them to type in lowercase yeah. C, I can shift it by, I think it's 36. I can shift it over by 36. So it, yeah. that character has a number associated with it. So right. let's say for a C it's 140 and then the uppercase value is like 34. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. 34 off of that. Yeah. I was just curious if it, anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I don't, I don't know anything about the Unicode stuff or anything like that. That's I, I'm a hobbyist. This is, I just do yeah. this stuff for a hobby. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty awesome. Though. I up, see the advantages of, using the GDI library overall. I mean. So my new one, my new class is virtually, it does everything the same way, except I just have a different way of controlling it. So before I had that, I would look through, when, when I would do this hover function, I would look through and <clears throat> look for, I would have to loop through, if I had a hundred buttons, every time it runs through that, that timed routine, it would have to loop through all those buttons and check. Mm -hmm. Now what I have is it knows I use the handle as, as its index. So when a control is created, if you think of an array, right? Yeah. You can jump right to it, jump right to it. So I don't have to loop yeah. through anything. Right. Yeah. And that's also, one from watching Maestri with code over years now. I learn little stuff like that. You're like, oh my god, it's so it makes so much sense. Yet, you know, until you do it, yeah, you, you don't. It's not something you think up on your own until you really get into it. You're like, oh wow, <laughs> yeah. So, so this is this is um, that that method of of creating controls and adding and just using adding an image. So the the let's 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 look at the 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 basic code for how that class works because it is really simple. I just have, like I said, this is an older, an older version of the class. Mm -hmm. So all I have is I have this function that gets called up. It's, it's on a timer. It gets called up 50 mil every 50 milliseconds. But even if it's 100 milliseconds, that's more than enough for yeah. it to seem be seamless. Sure. Right. Oh yeah. It's nothing. Yeah. It gets the, the, the handle to the control that I'm currently over. So whatever, wherever my cursor is, gets that control it's handle. And mm -hmm. then it tries to match it with the handle for one of these buttons. If it matches, mm -hmm. it says, okay, draw mm -hmm. it in its hover state. If it's, cool. if okay. it, and it sets a variable saying, okay, I'm currently hovering over something. Right. So it skips that. So it doesn't constantly go through this every single time. So as soon when I'm hovering over it, it does it once and then it waits for me to move it off. If I move it off, it checks to see if it's mat doesn't match anymore and then sets it so that way I can hover over something else again. The class itself is I just pass it an X position, a Y position, a width, a height, the window, the GUI's name that I'm attaching it to, mm -hmm. the label I want to attach it to, the text I want to pass it to it. Some These things, depending on the button that I have, it has different things. Like I can have um, the hover color change. So this class here, it actually has the ability, when I hover over it, I can actually specify which color I want it to be. So here I can say, I want it to be orange here. I want it to be blue. Mm -hmm. uh, when I press on the button, I want it to be blue here. I want it to, I want it to be green. So I can actually tell it to build them with that. Mm -hmm. I can change the text color when I hover over it. I can add, yeah. I can add a border around it. I can do anything I want with it um, by passing it different parameters. It's funny. Um, I was on a call early this morning with, with Maestrith. He was demonstrating his, he's updating his message box class mm -hmm. and, uh, and he's using HTML instead of like how you're approaching it. Mm -hmm. But um, it does a lot of the same type of stuff uh, that you, the, the level of control and colors and everything you want. Um, it was anyway, it's just a whole different way to do it. But, yeah. Um, so one of the, the cool. reason why I was saying before that people that are, especially if they're new coders, what I mm -hmm. suggest they do for like just the buttons, at least with the buttons is check out just me's because this doesn't have, like if I, if I select this and if I hit tab, it doesn't do anything. It yeah. doesn't jump to the next button. I can program that in. I know if I want it, if I want it to do that with this, I could come in here and program that in. I know how to do that. 
new other users, they might not know how to do that kind of thing. Yeah. So I just pass it those arguments, create my object with those parameters, and then I create a trigger, which is just drawing the image to a picture. I take a picture control, draw that bitmap to it, and I use that as also my trigger. So when I click on it, it knows to execute my function or label. Um, this is how I bind it. So I bind it through, I bind it through this um, class. So that way when I click on it, it goes into the class first. It jumps into a, a method in the class first. It checks, it changes the image. And then it says, okay, am I attached to a function as well? And if it is, then it'll go execute that function. So it first goes to a method in the class to draw and also to tell whether I'm, if my cursor's over here when I release it, it's not gonna execute anything. If it's here, then it'll execute. Cool. Um, ba -ba -ba. So I bind that to that. I check to see if the thing that I attached as my label, I check to see if it's a function or not. So I say, is, is the label, is the thing that I attached as a label, is it actually a function? And then I bind a function to it. Because now I can use function.call rather than go sub. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this is where it's pressed. When I press on the control, it focuses it. So let's say if I have an edit control in here and the edit currently has focus. If I press on the button, I don't want the edit to still be flashing. That's annoying. So I take away focus away from that edit, any other control, and give focus to oh. the button, which doesn't really do anything. It just takes it away from the other thing. Um, I turn off the timer so that way while I'm pressing on this, I can't hover over these. They don't change. Hmm. I change the image to its pressed state. I say, this is once again, what we were talking with our last video, rather than doing a key weight or key up or whatever. I just, while I'm pressing the button, just uh -huh. sleep for 10 milliseconds. Uh -huh. Once I release it, I turn the, the hover timer back on and I check whether I'm actually hovering over it. So if I'm not hovering over it, then execute, execute this code, which is just to draw it back in its default state. In other words, draw it back in its hover state and check if it's a function. If it is a function, call up that function. If it's not a function and it has a label, go sub that label. Cool. Other than that, it's just setting the image to that picture control and creating the bitmaps, which you can see I have to edit a lot. <laughs> yeah. But this is, this is the, the, the beauty of it is that I can, I can use those dimensions that I pass for its width and its height, and I can use those to determine how I draw everything. So this is, the, this is one way. This is creating classes where I can create buttons, switches, anything like that. So here, maybe, maybe this one here. So I can create radio buttons. I have a bunch of other controls that I haven't implemented in any scripts yet, but uh, they'll have, I have up downs, sliders, um, check a whole bunch of different check boxes, a whole bunch of different button classes for buttons that look different, whatever. And then that brings me to, like I said, the new, the new way that I'm, I've started working on is that bitmap where I create it. I think it's this one, this one here, where instead of adding a, taking a class and adding these, these buttons as a part of a class, I take this image and I embed certain controls into it. And I say, if I hover over this, then I want you to call up the function that created this whole bitmap and do an pass it, pass it a, a parameter. And depending on that parameter, I want you to change something. That is how this is created. So cool. this, <clears throat> besides the birds that are on it, is all a solid one single image. 
inside of that, I have controls. Once again, I use text controls to because I can easily cause it to trigger things, and I can also get the handle. Mm -hmm. I can tell which handle I'm over, which control I'm over. So I say, okay, if I hover over this, redraw this whole thing again with this new argument passed to it. The new argument is saying, I let's say this, let's say everything to do with here is if I pass it a six, if I pass it a six, if what I pass to the function is a six, change the color of this to blue, change mm -hmm. the color of this to green. If not, draw it as green and pink. Same thing with these. If I hover over them, all it's doing is it's calling up that. Let's see if I can actually find it. Main window. Okay, so this is my main window. So I have it set to a default of one or zero. Yeah. So every time I, if I mouse over a control that it recognizes, it calls up this function to redraw it and it passes it an argument. If, let's see if I can find one. So here, if I pass it a 12, if the, when I call up the function, if I pass it a 12, I want it to make something here white. So that's the border, actually. I can see what it is. It's the border. Other words, make it pink. Yeah, make it pink. So it's, there's a little bit of a border around the edge. Yeah, so I right now that. it's pink. If I mouse yeah. over it, it turns white. Yeah. Also, if the number is 12, change whatever this one is, probably the background for this, change that to that color. In other words, do it that color. And then last, the for the text itself, create a brush for the text in this color. In other words, create it in this color, which changes that text from pink to green. The same thing goes with everything else. If I hover over this, if I hover over these, it calls up this function, redraws everything, recreates that bitmap, destroys the old bitmap, and then just draws it again. And it does it seamlessly. If I go to here, same thing here. If I hover over here, it calls up, I pass it, I pass it a value to the function, and it changes the color. So it's green, now it's blue, now it's green. Same with up here. So this is a different approach rather than adding in buttons. Hmm. It's all part of the same image and I can just pass it an argument for value. So here's the latest script I'm actually working on right now where it implements that. So this is where the cool thing about GDIP is. I can animate things. So I have these bubbles going off in the background mm -hmm. and I have a bunch of different images. So I have an it, one single image for these buttons. And if I mouse over them, it changes them just by passing a different value to mm -hmm. the function. So, so here, I pass it a value. If that value is, if the value is one, draw that with a specific color. In other words, draw it with another color. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Last thing. Last. There's one last thing. Oh yes. This is this is something somebody helped me out with the other day. Um, I wanted to see. Finally, I've never actually used an icon. As I don't know if you can tell, but all of these are just the default auto mm -hmm. hotkey icons. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to see. Can I take one of these bitmaps, like this, mm -hmm. and actually use that as an icon? So mm -hmm. I went and asked, and it's super easy. So let me actually. So here it is. If I come to here, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a GUI just so that way I can get an icon down here. Let me get mm -hmm. rid of these. Um, always on top. Oh, I forgot. I got to do. So this is a bitmap that all it does is it creates a, a uh, blue rectangle mm -hmm. and that's my icon. And if I come into here, that's my blue icon. So I haven't played around with this yet, but let's see if I can take a some any other bitmap and mm -hmm. use that. So let's see. Um, maybe this one. Let's say if maybe I want to use this as an icon. Yeah. So I'm going to clipboard that. Mm -hmm. Replace this. And let's see. This is why you use single instant force. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, and there we go. So I have my icon. And I don't yeah. need to include any files. Yeah, that's awesome. I don't need to do anything. I can draw it all in that software and it's all done as text. So I think now, from now on, I'm going to start using some icons. Yeah, I, I, I love them when I use them, but, but I have real icons. But yeah, it, it's using graphical you know things to help remind you of stuff or to to see see things really helps so very cool so before we finish i'll do do a quick i'll show a couple of projects i haven't done too many like i said i only made this last year i i got i fell out of the i didn't do a lot of programming over the summer and then even since then i haven't done a lot of programming so i don't have a huge amount of examples but i got a few examples just to give people an idea on, you know, maybe inspire some things mm -hmm. on what they can do to, to, to using graphics to create their own. So just a few examples, you can create a paint program. I make auto clickers because they're quick and easy for me to make. Gives me something to do. Create my own controls for them. Switches, radio buttons, buttons. All of this is all of these are designed in that bitmap maker, but once again, you can you can type it out as code uh -huh. using GDIP to do some funky stuff with some graphics, parallax script. This one uses a different method of um, of drawing. It uses something a function called bit. BLT, I always just call it bit belt, but it's just basically a transfer of pixels. I, I don't, I, I'd have to look up its definition, but mm -hmm. somebody else can look it up um, for me to transfer things over. So it's another method. It's actually how the bitmap maker work uses. Um, so the, in the bitmap maker, 
what you what I actually have is a text control so that way I can click and drag things around and then in that same space I use a bit belt transfer to transfer the pixels onto that space cool um, layered windows you can create some beautiful custom message boxes with round nice rounded corners so this is a little a uh, little color picker I have that let's see I can do that and save for later I can take this and take a screenshot and then I can pop up this thing and go through all the images that I have so that's that image there so all kinds of things uh, this looks like glass Um, what I was going to do is this, that paint program, I was going to incorporate that paint program with this so I can actually draw on my screen and, mm -hmm. and then, you know, take some screenshots. Uh, I think, I think that's about it. Animation, video, simple video games. Don't quit my day job. <laughs> uh, a pixel search script. So this one is just a basically a pixel search. I don't know if you used pixel search before. Um, but if I'm looking, if I have a program and I'm looking for a specific button to change color or something like that, I can set it to watch that color and then as soon as it's done. Right. Yeah, I, I I don't use why well, I, I don't have that need. Yeah, I had to use it before for a um I was automating posting to a site and the script worked perfectly up until it got to a, uh, it, it wouldn't trigger a button. I couldn't programmatically make it trigger a button. So I used a pixel search to just look for that specific color in that specific location. And then, yeah, I use the find text function, um, for, for doing that, which is for me, super easy to use. And yeah, but yeah, but that is, that's all for that. Yeah. I'm sure I have like a million other examples of drawing graphics and things that you can do with graphics, but uh, no, that's pretty awesome. Forever. Pretty impressive. So do you, have, do you have any questions about that though? No, I mean, you, you covered a lot. And so I, I asked them mostly on the way, um, you know, as we went. So a lot of information, um, but yeah, very cool. And it's not hard to see the value of being able to, to do this stuff, especially do it quickly. Yeah. It's, it's, I like it because it adds my own flavor to it. I don't. I don't like the the default GUIs. They, I think they look uh, like trash on at least on Windows eight. Like, uh, yeah, they're not sexy. Yeah, but definitely they work. Not. But yeah, I, I hear you. So, so my first thing this I for like a year, I, my thing was using progress bars. So this is all made with progress bars. Mm -hmm. So everything, if I go in here and like this, it's all progress bars. Mm -hmm. Everything in here is progress bars. That's a progress bar. That's a progress bar. It's text. There's some text controls too, but yeah. you know. Um, select all. But my thing was progress bars. Uh, and I mean, I, I went pretty far with it. As far as I think I could. This is a tool to actually create these buttons. And there's like so many different values I can pass to it, like so many different colors I can use, color combinations, the size of everything to be able to create things like um, this one here. Let's see. This is a game written all in. These are, this game is just text controls and progress bars. So everything you see is either a text control or a progress bar. The dice, they are all progress bars. So a lot of things you can do with custom graphics. Let's see. Yeah. Um, there was another one. This one I like. See this, see how it's loading the program? right that's that's fake yeah yeah i've played with progress before 
I just wanted to have an animation. I just wanted to have an animation yeah. in the beginning where it yeah. fades out and everything like that. So I created this. See where it's loading? It's not loading anything. It's fake. It's not loading shit. Yeah, I know. I understand. Yeah, it explains a lot of, especially when you see Windows installing something, it's like, oh, there's this much left. And it's like, it has no idea. Yeah. So that's that's kind of a joke. I don't think anyone actually ever caught on to that. But yeah, because I released this. I don't think it, I mean, nobody's actually made a comment about uh, why is it loading? It doesn't yeah. actually load that's anything. Funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Same with this. This is all all progress bars. I actually created a class so that way I could quickly take a cool. progress bar and use it as yeah. a slider. Yeah. And then if I pick color, I can create, generate random colors. Once again, everything is a progress bar in there. If I want to switch, generate only green colors, or I'm greenish blue colors, only blue colors. If I want to save a color, I guess I have to get a color. Save 150 colors if I want. But yeah, that was, I got tired of using progress bar so that I switched to GDIP. But G, I could see that GDIP doing this all by hand. No, thank you. Oh, mercy. Yeah. No, thank you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You have to have a tool to help. Um, it'd be crazy to do that by hand every time. Yeah. So I think, I think that that covers everything. If anyone wants, um, I'll give Joe the link to where you can get a copy of the bitmap maker. I will point out one thing before we go with the bitmap maker. It's designed for 100%. It's designed for 100% DPI scaling. DPI scaling is still mm. something I'm, I'm trying to learn. Yeah. I'm still trying. I don't spend a lot of time on it. I don't, I usually have like an, another window open with 50 tabs in it. In order for me to actually test DPI scaling, I have to log out, which means it closes all those mm -hmm. tabs. So all my, all the videos that I might be watching and the threads that I might have open, I have to close those to do testing. So I don't do testing. Yeah. But, could, if it'll help, um, I'll point you, I think, I think it was something like Romek, um, on my screen clipping tool that, um, it didn't, it didn't take into account, um, the, what are you mentioning? The DPI. And yeah. he made, he added like three lines and then it took care of it. Um, well, I have, I have in this, I have in this, it's, I do, I do use minus DPI scaling, but uh -huh. the problem is, is it doesn't affect text. So when you get, uh -huh. if you have, if you have 125% or 150%, yeah. this button will be the same size, but the text right. on it won't be right. Yeah. This will be off size. So yeah. Yeah. What you can do if you get this program and you have DPI scaling is it'll take a couple of minutes to do it. It won't take long, but it will take a couple of minutes. Let me see. Is There's two two classes that have it. So in here, you can change the font. So look for any time that it's creating the font and just reduce it. So if it's eight, reduce it to six. If it's 10, reduce it to eight. And that should fix most of the DPI scaling problems. Because I do use the DPI scale, minus DPI scale, but it doesn't affect text, which okay. is the most retarded thing I've ever I don't get that. I don't. I don't know what the point of DPI minus DPI scale if if it doesn't affect text. I don't get that. I have no idea why. Especially since it gets back to it's be, the text isn't text. It's being drawn by the the GDI class. So well, this isn't this isn't GDI. This is default. This is all of these. This oh, is, okay. I'm right, because I didn't have. I needed this tool in order to create the GDI stuff. Okay. Right, so these are all default. This is a default button. So when I use, even though I'm using DPI scale, it'll be the same size on your screen. Yeah. But the text won't be. That's one of the things I do like about about um, GDI. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't care about the DPI scale. Okay. It draws it exactly how I draw it. Is how it's going to be. How on my screen, it's going to yeah. be the exact same on your screen. So I don't care. I don't care if. I don't care if this takes up this much space on my screen, 
but only takes up a fraction of that on your screen. I don't care. I don't care. I just want it to look exactly the same mm -hmm. as it does on my screen on your screen. So that's why that's one of another reason why I switched to, to GDIP because mm. when you, if I give you this script and you put load it on your screen, if you have a higher resolution and you're using a different DPI scaling, it's just going to look smaller. That's it. Mm -hmm. It's going to look exactly the same. It's just going to look smaller. That's it. It's not going to stretch it. I don't, I don't get the, I don't really get uh, the whole purpose of going out and buying an extra large monitor. If you're just going to scale everything up. I hear you. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, this was awesome. Yeah. So that's it. So I'll so, give you uh, the links to this and some other tools. Great. That people yeah. And, and the other one for people that are interested, go check out his channel. Um, just make sure you look for it. Why don't you type it in here so people see it? Uh, that, but you're Civ Reborn. Just so, because yes. you, the name of your yeah. channel is actually Civ Reborn right there. Yes. Oh. Yeah. So this is my channel's name. All one word. Civ, C-I-V-R-E-B-O-R-N. Yeah. And my um, name so is Hellbent. He does a lot of stuff with, with GUIs um, and, and whatnot. So it's uh, virtually nothing that I cover. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we don't have a lot of overlap. No. Awesome, man. Well, thank you for the overview. That was very Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your time, Joe. All right, man. Talk to Great you soon. Catching up. Bye.